So you, you brought up um you brought up Braille there. I I don't think we can end this without um talking about the uh Braille displays because like this is a, a piece of hardware that I think is really really cool, but I have no idea how they work. So the way that they commonly work um, is you have uh, your raise up your just keys. a little this bit one more. Has a Yep. This one go. has a lot more keys than the usual one does. Mm -hmm. I have arrow keys on. It has arrow keys and function keys and mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. kinds of other stuff. Yep. And home yep. and end and everything because it's designed to be used with a computer. Most of them, that's an add-on feature. Like they're designed to be used as like really simple note-taking devices. This um, one is not. What is your specific one? Um, I'll bring up a picture of it. So it's, it's called easy. a QBraille XL. It's the one that I use. QBraille. Don't look at the pricing for them. Ah, uh, yeah, it's I know they're astronomically very bad. Yeah. I used to have one back in the early 2010s, and I think it cost about six grand at the time. Well, they're cheaper now. Ah, <laughs> uh, not those ones. Um, look up the one I had was the Braille Note. Look up the Braille Note Touch. And look at the price on that. Oh, okay. This is running like ten-year-old hardware, by the way. <laughs> like it runs Android eight. Oh. <laughs> Go look at the price for that. Okay. Uh, okay, that website. Ah, right, here we go. Store. Humanware is the website. Yes. Um. Oh, they just they're 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 doing a special right now. They just lowered the price. It's only yeah. it's only forty eight hundred. Only. Only. <laughs> for, so, for a device that runs Android eight, guys. <laughs> it's not even supported by G Suite anymore. You can't load Google Docs. That's incredible. And they expect people to buy this. That is amazing. It's bad, is what that is. Yeah, that sh that should be criminal. Mm -hmm. there, yeah, there's no um, reason for it to be running that. Wait, does uh? Oh wait, that uh, does the cube have other touch? Have the cube doesn't? It has a USB C what? port. Yeah. Wow, it's it's from the current decade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the previous one I have, the Focus, which is a 14 cell one that I carry around in my pocket, it has mm -hmm. micro B. Um, <laughs> but that's an older display, in all fairness. Okay, um, okay, okay. That probably isn't from the current decade. But anyway, <laughs> the way that these work is you connect them to the computer via <laughs> USB or Bluetooth, and realistically, you should just have Braille output on the, on the single line of Braille. Yes. Linux console has really good support for this, BRLTTY. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um... It's kind of old at this point. Mm -hmm. It expects a frame buffer. Um, <laughs> it eats ports. Mm -hmm. um, have a Braille display connected, plug in anything else. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to get it detected. Right. Unless you write a UDEV rule. Right. Um, that's not their fault. That's just because it, uh, it enumerates ports alphabetically. And so if you connect it to a port that it has, that it's enumerated over... Mm -hmm. Um, and decided it once for some reason before it reached the braille display. Yeah. Right. Um, sometimes it binds to the wrong thing. Sometimes it decides like TTY AC0 is close enough to TTY S0 and <laughs> good luck. So <laughs> like with, at that point. with the actual, like um, the, the braille part of it, does that, like, yeah. does that just like take the current text that's shown? Like, how, do, how does that it work? It takes whatever is in... There's like a thing called the Braille Focus. Mm. And so it takes whatever the current line is in the Braille Focus. So you can navigate between lines very easily. Right. Um, and it's great. And it works great in a console mm. if you're using American English Braille. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know there were different kinds of English Braille. There's a lot of different kinds of Braille. There's... Uh, standard English Braille, which actually wasn't standard at all. The Americans just decided to call it standard because they uh, were like, ours, it's normal, right? Right. No. Standard English Braille. Then there was UK English uh -huh. uncontracted, UK English contracted, UK English computer 6 dot, UK uh -huh. English computer 8 dot, uh -huh. UK 2004, which was a different thing entirely. Right. Um, okay. Because for some reason we decided to change it for a year. <laughs> this sounds very uh, right similar. Now we're on unified English Braille. Uh, this sounds very similar to the situation that sign language has, where there's like seven different English versions mm -hmm. because that's very I, convenient. I, 
Yeah, I do just love that the Americans called that standard English. That's because America's the center of the world. What do you mean? <laughs> and then everyone else went, no, we're not using that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, at least, at least with sign language, they they have the honesty to call it American sign language. So there's at least, uh, yeah. they, at least on that side, they're not going to be as cocky about it. Yeah, just standard English Braille. That's yeah. Thanks, America. Um, <laughs> a lot of places don't call it that anymore. A lot of places now call it US. Ah, okay. Because a lot of manufacturers kind of realized this isn't the standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, what issues does it have if you're not doing that, then? Sometimes the dot mappings can be weird. Mm. Uh, for example, if I type the dots 1, 4, 5, and 6, I might get 2, 3, and 8, because mm. some translation went wrong somewhere. Oh, okay. And this is especially noticeable when using uh, contracted Braille. So, mm -hmm. contracted Braille... If you if you don't know, mm -hmm. it lets because Braille is bigger than print and you only have a certain amount of characters. Sometimes it's better to shorten a word. Right. So for example, the, the word can is just the letter C with a space on either side of it. Okay. If you type if you type the word the letter C with a space, you're going to put the word can in a document. Okay. And if those translation tables are not exactly right and don't exactly follow the rules, you're going to have breakage somewhere. Mm. And that's not BRLTTY's fault. Um, it's not also not even the fault of the people making the translation tables, making that very clear right now. Mm -hmm. There's a, a hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Braille translation tables from Spanish to French, German, Chinese, Korean. Chinese yeah. Braille is a trip. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other thing in itself. I don't want to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Sometimes it will just spit out garbage stuff. Right. Or sometimes you'll boot into a graphical session and all you'll see on your Braille display is screen not in text mode. <laughs> yes. I know. <laughs> I want to read the graphical session, please. Uh-huh. Uh, and you need a whole bunch of things installed. You need BRLTTY. You need XBraille API. I actually don't even know how well it works on Wayland because <laughs> Wayland annoyed me that much. I just never tried it. Let's I'm guessing out. it'll work now because Orca works, but like right. maybe, um, so the Braille displays have these things called routing keys mm. over each of the cells and you can use them to jump, uh, the cursor to a certain point in the document. Mm -hmm. Bet you that doesn't work under Wayland. Never tried it, but it doesn't. So, okay, this isn't, Red Hat has a page in their documentation about it. How well it works, I don't know, but they at least explain how to get it to work. Yeah, they do. I, I really appreciate the fact that they actually put the time into making that. Mm -hmm. um, like, like I'm, I'm specifically calling out that I haven't tested it because I don't want to say it doesn't work. Right, fair. Right? I just, again, I want to use my computer. Right, I don't want to play debug simulator <laughs> when I don't have to. Yeah, no, I, have I don't. To, I have to do it a lot of the time. I'm not going to introduce problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. I don't want to add more problems to my already really problematic <laughs> install. Um, because it already breaks every day. Uh -huh. In some weird way. What was yesterday's problem, for example, was a glorious one. Oh. My alt key didn't work. Oh. At all. That's fun. Why? It, everything else worked. My alt key didn't work. I don't know. It was sending some garbage key code. <laughs> that, like, was just being discarded. So, if, o o honest question. When you have a problem, how often, when you know you, you don't have any work that's unsaved, do you just turn your computer off and turn it back on? I like pain, so I try and avoid doing it. I see. Okay. I like fixing it. Okay, okay. Like, every kernel update is kexec. Okay, exactly. <laughs> Mostly because turning everything off and on again scares me because I wonder what's going to be broken the next time. Like, if it's not a problem I really care about, I'm just like, I'm going to deal with this. Right, okay. That makes sense. Um, but no, if, in all seriousness, I will sometimes just... I'll turn it off and on again and I'll fix it. Yeah, yeah. I've had I'd a... probably do that less than I do on Windows. <laughs> Let's be fair. Mm -hmm. Windows, that's basically my only recourse because... Documentation? What's that? 
Yeah. Um, At least the Arch Wiki has a lot of troubleshooting steps that I can try. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 